What's up, guys? Welcome back. And today we have another special guest, uh, Mr. Lauren Goldman with First American Title. He's been there for the last couple of decades, one of the top salespersons there. Recently just completed the largest sale in California. In California history. That is correct. It was about 200 million and it was a beautiful property, obviously, in Malibu and I was lucky enough to do it. So $200 million on one residential property. Yes, sir. The largest ever in the state of California. Amazing. I wish I was part of it, but I wasn't. But you were, which is awesome. Thank you. And that's why we have you here. You're obviously a legend in the field of real estate when it comes to title insurance, right? Thank you. The first question anybody would ask is, what is title insurance? Well, it is one of those things at closing that can be a little boring, but it is so important in the closing process. Title insurance is a policy, one time at close, mm -hmm. uh, written to benefit the buyer, who at the end of the transaction is the insured, clearing title the condition of title mm -hmm. of the seller and the property of all liens, judgments, encumbrances, all record matters are shown, recorded documents, assessments, anything and everything that affects the property financially and otherwise. Mm. So we can cut clean basically from seller to buyer. So guys, so when somebody buys a property, this insurance says you own it unequivocally 100% and we're going to guarantee that. Correct. And if we miss something, you're, you have insurance. The buyer has insurance for things that we miss. Wow. If there's a loan missed, we pay for it. Wow. If there's an easement that harms the buyer, we pay for it. So it comes to not only loans, but like easements and, and all that good Old stuff. Old recorded documents from the beginning blended with what's new today, the vesting, the ownership, who signs for the property to be sold, loans again being paid off, taxes, assessments, you name it. So it's a blend of what was originally there from development, recorded documents, wow. and then the new stuff all comes together, cleaned up, and one time it closed, insurance to the buyer. So this buyer owns it. And the true ownership papers, when you buy a piece of property, yeah. is your title policy. You can record a deed, that's fantastic. Oh. It says you own the property, but okay. there's no insurance behind that, right? Yeah. So your title policy at the end of the day is your true ownership of that property. So how? So basically on this $200 million property, you guys are on the hook for it if something came up. If something came up, we pay. All right, that's a little nerve-wracking. <laughs> so, we do our homework. We do, okay. Probably took extra long to write that policy. If I, if I could say it was one of the easiest and, and, and most uh, pleasurable deals uh, I've worked on. I'm sure it was. $200 million in working with celebrities is probably... There a, were smart people uh, all the way across. I'm sure there's yeah. 10 different lawyers and business yeah. managers. And so the other thing was, like, if someone's buying something cash, right? Because people think, well, I'm buying this cash. Why do I need a title policy? So the title policy really is about the, s the property itself mm -hmm. and the seller or sellers. Whether it's, it's uh, in a trust, whether it's joint tenancy community property, mm -hmm. whether it's a corporation, LLC. Yeah. Title quarterbacks, who signs for the property? Got who it. must sign for the property? Who signs off? The signatures, mm -hmm. the notaries. Uh, we make sure all of that is good so when it does transfer to the to the buyer, mm -hmm. uh, nobody can come back to that buyer and claim that they, they uh, didn't get a piece of what they were owed at closing. Uh, right. Think about a partner in a, in a corporation or, or limited partnership. Think about an ex-wife. Mm -hmm. uh, think about brothers, sisters, family, you name it. Yeah. Uh, we quarterback at all of that. And, and really, if we miss something, mm -hmm. we pay for it. You guys pay for it. Yeah. If you don't have a title policy, Angel, that asset asset is pretty dead in the water really? because you will not be able to refinance it or sell it in the future wow. because if, if, if you go to do that, refinance it or sell it without a title policy, yeah. the title companies will back vest it to the last owner, the guy you wow. bought it from. And then now you're going to that person and you're getting signatures and they may or may not be alive. Then Whoa. you're going to their heirs and you're going to the ex-wife who's mad and so on and so forth. So, so it is a dead in the water asset without that's, title insurance. It cuts it clean so you can go forward. That, that's super interesting because many years ago we were a partnership in this piece of property. One of our partners tried to screw us and they basically went down to the recorder's office and said, hey, I own this now. And obviously the notary signed off, whoever he got. And we're like fighting this thing. But knowing what you just told me, he really can do anything with it. So anybody can record anything, really. Yeah. You can fill out a document. There's right. blank documents all over the web. Yep. You can get it notarized. You can walk to the county recorder and you can, you can record this thing. And that's and what he did. You can walk around with an absolutely legal, valid deed. 
but the title company will recognize they'll recognize it in, in the prelim, yeah. but they'll they'll basically clean it up with signatures to verify that this was uh, okay to move legitimate forward sale. on legitimate. The right people are signing off. They have the authority to do so, and if we don't like it, yeah. um, we make sure that we get to a place where we do. Somewhat, we were still protected. Somewhat, even though it changed ownership on title. Right. You, you, you can do anything you want. You can record a deed. We call that an uninsured transfer. Mm -hmm. And when, it, when a prelim comes out, we ask for an affidavit verifying that uninsured transfer. Got it. But again, when, when this policy starts, uh, the prelim launches from the last insured policy and then moves the last forward. Insured. The last okay. insured. So we don't search back from day one. Right. Although a lot of the things on the prelim are from day one, yeah. from the development of the property. Got that it. carries forward to every new owner. But we, we just go back to the last insured, the last insured and then we clean it up for what happened going forward. Why, why would somebody need title insurance? So without title insurance, theoretically, Angel, you buy a piece of property and somebody can knock on your door after close mm -hmm. and say, we're foreclosing on you. Well, and you have no idea what's going on. Yeah. And then you realize that the title company that did the insurance for you when you bought this mm -hmm. missed the seller's loan. Maybe mm -hmm. there was a line of credit. Again, maybe there was a signature from, from a wife that should have signed off. Yeah. Maybe there was a tax lien. Uh, maybe there's an IRS franchise tax board, a judgment. Anything that, that affected the property that was missed mm. could be brought to that new buyer's door and cause them trouble. In that right. case, they just call me and we research the claim. And if it's something, again, that title missed, we pay. What's the difference? You mentioned a seller and a buyer policy. What are the differences between those two things? Sure. So there's two policies when a, in a, a transaction when there's a loan going down. Mm -hmm. So if a property is being purchased, there's an owner's policy of title. In California, we issue an ALTA homeowner policy. Mm -hmm. uh, that homeowner policy traditionally here paid for by the seller. Not a law, but that's normally the way it works. And the seller pays for the buyer's homeowner policy, which really transfers that risk of ownership uh, that the buyer now gets via insurance, right? Mm -hmm. So homeowner policy, owner's policy from seller to buyer. The buyer, if they're getting a loan, yeah. will buy a lender's policy of title for the benefit of their lender. So the owner's policy is based on loan amount. If I'm selling to you for a million dollars, I will pay for a million dollars of title coverage for the buyer. Okay. If you, the buyer, are getting an $800,000 loan, 20% mm -hmm. down, Got you it. will get a lender's policy of title for the benefit of your lender that will cost you about seven eight hundred dollars and it's really the you're protecting the lender for the, the right legal description the right borrower um, and, but mostly what the lender really wants is insurance that they're a first position deed of trust got it so it just basically covers what loan or how much however much they lend loan do you on the property? They're, we're giving them $800,000 worth of insurance because that's the loan amount, mm -hmm. but we're guaranteeing them a first position deed of trust, which means they could package it up on Wall Street if they want mm. and sell it. It's a more valuable instrument. But if they should foreclose on you, yeah. the buyer, uh, they are first to have their hand out. There's nothing else that could pop up in, and, pop up in front of them to collect. And that's the policy that you guys are guaranteeing? Guaranteeing them with a policy. When you pull a preliminary title report, like what are the things you normally find on there? So the first thing we're going to find is the vesting of the property. Who owns the property, right? Very yeah. important. Uh, sometimes you, as a realtor, are running with party one, mm -hmm. and there's also party two involved, and you didn't know that. Mm -hmm. So the title report will have the complete vesting. And then further in the vesting, do we need to go to probate? You know, is it joint tenancy? Is the joint tenancy at the end of its line? Community property? Is it in a trust? Is the, is the co-trustee still alive? Mm -hmm. If not, are the kids taking over? Um, I need death certificates to prove that. I need a copy of the trust for successor trustee. Um, oh my gosh, is, is, is mom um, going to the hospital because of Alzheimer's? What does that do? Doctor's notes, trust takes over, successor trustee. So there's all these different ways of kind of quarterbacking the vesting to make sure that we have it wire tight so the right people are signing away this property. Because again, if we miss it, we pay for it. So basically, like you want to make sure the person who's selling this is the person who can sell it. 
Hundred percent. And then we get into loans. We, we did make sure that all loans of record are paid off before mm -hmm. it transfers to the buyer. Yeah. Um, we want to make sure all off record matters. We call them things that are really not attached to the property, but mm -hmm. affect the sale of a property. IRS, franchise tax board, or a regular judgment. If someone gets a judgment against you, mm -hmm. they don't have to find every property you own. But it's title's job to say, hey. Angel's part of this property, or Angel used to own this property mm -hmm. before the last insurance kicked in, and therefore whatever judgment we find now has to come into play, and then you need to pay or prove that it's been taken care of. Uh, oh, and, yeah. and if not, again, we're responsible. So you got to take it out or, or bring it to the bring it to the table and said, "Hey, we got to figure. We, we got to flush all that out again. What's on record and what's <laughs> off record? All of that kind of blends in to make sure that the buyer gets clean title. And listen, there's bankruptcies. Um, there's again all kinds of liens and judgments that we got to go through. Yeah. Um, divorces, um, debt, uh, death. There's all these things that we kind of have to work through mm -hmm. to get to the place where we can close. Got it. And, and I've seen situations where, you know, like on a new development. Uh, developer per se, they didn't pay one of their their contractors, right? And this new buyer comes in, they close, they're moving in, and all of a sudden they get served with this mechanics lien. Yeah, does that Big happen? Deal. Yes, it does. It does quite often because the last few years there's been a lot of construction, right? right. A lot of a lot of people building, flipping, improving. Yep. Contractors have rights to get paid. Right. They can't repossess the driveway they just put down. Sure. So they have the right to lien the property, whether they've been paid or not. Mm. So they can lien it. Beforehand, they could lean it afterwards, but they have the right to lean it. I can't lean you. I have to go get a judgment, but contractors have the right to lean. Okay. And there's a, there's a lean period mm -hmm. that title has to respect where those contractors, do, again, do have that right. Mm. So are we in that lean period, Mr. Contractor? Yeah. When's the timeline when work stopped and, uh, and the lean period is over? Mm -hmm. We have to determine that. Notice of completion should be recorded. It's a document that starts that timeline. But mechanics liens are a big deal, and you can't throw money or bond around a mechanics lien mm -hmm. because that con contractor not only has the right to lien your property, mm -hmm. but they have the right to foreclose on the property. Mm -hmm. So no matter how much money you want to throw at this to make that contractor go away, mm -hmm. he has the right to foreclose, really? which in worst case scenario could be a complete failure of title. So we just don't play with that. I mean, this, this contractor has to be dealt with. With, the issue has to go away yeah. uh, because, again, they can foreclose. They can foreclose. So in that situation, you know, a buyer buys this. All of a sudden, he gets served with this this lien. Who's responsible? Well, if it's if it if there was work in progress mm -hmm. and we knew about it and we let it close anyway within the lien period, mm -hmm. we're responsible for it. Mm -hmm. uh, but we conduct in that lien period what's called mechanic lien coverage, mm -hmm. and the mechanic lien coverage will basically fill that lien period gap with insurance. So we protect the buyer against any of so those things. So it's liens. basically covered. It's basically covered because we do our homework again, knowing that there's work going on. Mm -hmm. Who's been paid? How much have they been paid? Uh, books and records. I want an indemnity from you, Angel, the, the owner of the, the property, Got it. the seller, and I want a, a general contractor sign off. So we, we do a lot of homework to get to the place where we're comfortable issuing mechanic lien coverage for the buyer. So mm -hmm. those contractors, if they should record a mechanics lien, really title, title is protected. We mm -hmm. can go back to the seller and get reimbursed. Uh, but outside of that lien period, mm -hmm. anybody can record anything. It's a regular deal. All right. So it's, it's a free, basically, until it's proven, basically. Right. What's the risk of not getting title insurance? I think we talked about a lot of them, but like, what's the biggest one? You don't have to have title insurance mm -hmm. legally, but you're foolish if you don't. Mm -hmm. I've been doing this almost 30 years. Yeah. I don't even think I can count on one hand the mm -hmm. time that a buyer did not get title insurance. Maybe from a, from a son, to, for a, from a father in a rare instance. Yeah. Um, and that's what I'm but, thinking, like when somebody, like their parent vests you their property or, you know, uh, brother or sister, in those situations, they're just like, we don't need that. We're just going to sign it over to you. It's yours, but it's really not theirs. It's theirs on paper, but they're right. not insured that it's theirs. Mm -hmm. So what can happen in the future? A spouse could die. You can get divorced. Uh, a, a brother's, sister's, family squabbles start coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, it should have been my property. Uh, why did mom deed it to you? All of these things. And we get it. But it's our job when, when you do get title insurance to clean all that up, meaning we get the right signatures, we get mm -hmm. to the right place where everybody that needs to has signed off. And, and the right sellers can sign the deed. And the money goes to the right place. 
uh, and without title insurance, that all of that is wide open. Again, you, you will in the future uh, be making payments for years and years and years and one day wake up and find somebody is, is basically at your throat for the title. And that, that happens a lot when you have these side deals of, hey, let me, let me pay you for your property and then you, know, you need it over to me and, and there's no title insurance. It's the best one-time investment at closing per, to protect the biggest asset that you'll purchase. Uh, and, and really, the bulk of it is paid for by the seller. Right. Uh, again, you'll pay for a loan policy, but it's paid for by the seller for your benefit buyer. Mm -hmm. uh, so buyers do insist on title insurance. And again, nobody wants to have a dead-in-the-water asset that they can't refinance, sell, or do anything with. They can't move it. I mean, can't move it, can't really do anything with it. And then when you do go to get title insurance after the fact, after closing at that point, again, all of this spirals back to the seller, and God knows where they are. That's super interesting. That's um, trouble, and that's that's uh, the lawyers love that. All right, Lauren, thank you so much. That was so much information that I didn't know about myself. Viewers out there, thank you so much for watching. You just heard it from one of the best in the business, 30 years in the game, just closed the biggest sale in California, 200 million. As always, guys, please like and subscribe, and I'm sure we missed something, and if we did, hit it in the comments. I will respond to it, or Lauren will respond to it directly. See you again on the next one. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I keep dancing. I keep dancing. You were right there. Let's do it again.